Inside this video right here, I'm gonna explain when exactly you wanna give aspirin to a patient. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, what's going on? It's the paramedic coach here. And if you're new here, be sure to hit the notification bell down below and that subscribe button and be sure to like this video. Why? I call in videos every single week, multiple times a week on this channel about everything EMS, EMT, advanced EMT and paramedic. And let's get into aspirin. Why do we give aspirin and when do we give aspirin in EMS? Now, I have a little drawing here that I wanna go over first. But let's talk first about indications. We give aspirin for two main indications. If someone has chest pain, it's an indication to give aspirin. Now, if we suspect that someone is having an MI, a myocardial infarction, myo means muscle, okay? Cardio, think cardiac, the heart. Infarction means death, so tissue death. So that's a heart attack, right? Makes sense. So MI equals heart attack. Myocardial infarction is a heart attack. Now, with that being said, let me talk more about what aspirin does in the body. So aspirin, you write this down, you're gonna wanna put this in the comments or write this down for yourself, is an antiplatelet aggregator. So what does that mean? It's antiplatelet aggregation. So think about it like this. If I took a knife, okay, and let's say I was to cut my skin, platelets would rush to that and clot it up, okay? That's what platelets do. Now, at the same time, here's what happens in MI. So here's the coronary artery that's being attacked in the heart, okay? It's stopping blood flow to the heart muscle. Now, here's the artery and here's the clot. So a clot is basically a bunch of platelets sticking on top of each other. That can make the clot worse and worse and worse until it fully occludes. So what aspirin's gonna do is tell the platelets to stop sticking to this clot, thus making the clot not get any worse than it already is. The reason why we tell patients to take aspirin immediately, as soon as they can, is because aspirin saves lives and makes the clot not get any worse once you take it. So let's say you're not fully occluded at that point, we could have just saved a lot of time, a lot of heart muscle there. Now finally, the dose of aspirin is 324 milligrams orally, but we don't give one adult aspirin that you might find in your local pharmacy. We're gonna give four baby aspirin, the patient has to chew up the aspirin. That's how we give it an EMS, four baby aspirin is the dose. Now, a lot of people will say that, hey, you know, don't give um, don't give aspirin if someone's bleeding, right? Don't give somebody aspirin if they have a GI bleed. But what about if they have a stroke? Do we give aspirin stroke? No, we don't. Think about it after what I told you. Why will we not give aspirin in a stroke? Because we don't know if it's an ischemic stroke or if it's a hemorrhagic stroke. If they have bleeding going on in their brain and then we give aspirin, that patient can't clot anymore, you see? So this is why with GI bleeds, this is why with any bleeding patient, we don't give them aspirin. That's a contraindication, which means why we would not give aspirin. Now here's the bottom line. If we go to a patient and we think they're having an MI, a heart attack, or they have chest pain, we suspect they might be having a heart attack, give aspirin, okay? That's the bottom line here. This is when we give it. Now on the point of MI, a heart attack, don't forget that someone could have a sneaky MI, meaning it's atypical symptoms, okay? So what are some of those? Well, difficulty breathing, okay? We know the classic signs is basically, you know, pain down your arm, left-sided, up into your jaw, left-side chest pain, crushing. But what if 
they have no chest pain but difficulty breathing and nausea vomiting and back pain or it could be a, a pain in between the shoulder blades. What if they're just dizzy? Maybe they had a, a, a syncope. But you suspect they're having an MI or the EKG shows it but no chest pain. Of course, go ahead and give the aspirin. My goal with this video was to finally clear up aspirin for you so you understand that. Hopefully I achieve that goal. Let me know in the comments down below and smash that like button. Finally, if you're one of these three people, if you are getting ready for school, if you're in school now, or you're getting ready for your national registry exams, click the link in the description down below. It'll say learn more, prepare for EMS.com is my prep course. You get access to over 180 videos plus our community group and me as your coach. And we are in the thousands strong inside of that community group. My friends, I'll see you inside there. Click learn more in the description to see more about that. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Kept, oh, like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these all these you know links inside my brain and i i just knew right then and there um i have to have this program i have to have all the information that he's willing to give i need all of it i went through it i i spent the time and money in other areas and i'm, I'm just gonna let you guys know that uh this was everything i was searching for the whole time the first couple of videos i watched um when i noticed it, it just i i just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasp. Went on there that I continued reviewing and I did it for about a month and you know, it, it helped a lot. Like I said, even after school and I took that test one time and I passed it. Your particular program, you have your students engaging and you have your students discussing and you have your students actually using your products. And I'm seeing time and time again, um, students that are coming in and announcing their new certification with national registry Olds obviously passing the exam doing it pretty quickly 70 questions in about an hour um well you definitely are like how your videos are like i wasn't sure how it was gonna be but you are how you, your videos are so that was awesome so people who are getting ready for paramedic school or if you're getting ready to go in the navy as a corpsman or as an army medic um you want to prepare yourself. Evan, I know you've got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is, guys, you don't ever want to hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't want to hear about AFib for the first time where everybody else, you want to have an understanding of it before you walk in the room. From 120 questions, passing two sections, um, near passing one, and then I think two below passing to seven questions passing Sorry, completely thousand seven thousand dollars for school plus everything else that you put into it all the time and all the time off work and family and everything it's to see people fail and fail and fail and then just quit which i know a couple of people who have i tend to say you know it doesn't hurt to have somebody right there to talk to you know send a question anytime i get the chance i'll, I'll gladly offer or advise them to sign up for you and your paramedic coach. It's, it's truly helpful and amazing at what you do. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.